All right, let's look at the present value formula in Excel uh, equals PV. Uh, we'll build a little cash model for how something's going to work and then show it with uh, equal PV. And uh, that shouldn't be too difficult to do. So first we're going to do a lump sum, uh, then we'll do an annuity, and then we'll do both. So um, let's say you put $1,000 into a CD today. You're going to let that grow for five years, and then at the end of five years, you'll get a lump sum. Uh, so first we have to grow the money. So the money is going to grow by uh, 1 plus uh, 0.02. <clears throat> it's at 2% CD, so it's going to grow by 2% per year, 1 plus growth. Just multiply by 1 plus, plus growth. So at the end of five years, you're actually going to get back $1,100, uh, $1,104.08 uh, roughly. Uh, and then present value-wise, we don't get any of this cash back uh, until here. So we actually get the money back here. And so the present value is just that divided by 1 plus um, uh, whatever the, the discount factor is. In this case, we'll just discount by inflation. Uh, and inflation is 0.015 or 1.5% to the power of uh, 5 here because we're 5 years out. And so that $1,104 that you get will actually be worth $1,024.87. So in real terms, you waited 5 years to get $25. Bucks. Um, is that a good deal? I don't know. It depends on what that $1,000 was being put away for in the first place. Uh, but anyway, we can prove this uh, with a simple present value. So equals PV. Uh, our rate in this count is the discount rate. Uh, so this is one and a half percent. If you don't like putting things in in uh, decimal form, so 0 0.015 like I did here, you can also put in 1.5 and then just add a percent uh, by hitting shift five. Uh, and that's fine as well. Uh, in per is just the number of periods, uh, in this case years, uh, comma payment uh, is zero. There was no payment year over year. Uh, payment would be in each time period something that happened. In this case, we don't have that. Uh, and so the only thing we have is a future value, and our future value is right here, $1,104. That's what our value is. So um, like this, we hit it, and then it goes uh, $1,024.87. Uh, don't worry about uh, negative or positive. Uh, just ignore those. Uh, one of them that has to go in negative, the other, and it'll come back positive, or you have to put it in negative, and it'll come back or if you put it in positive, it'll come back negative. So we can change the future value and it'll flip it, but it doesn't actually matter as long as you know uh, how this is all working. Um, my suggestion is like when you put money in, this would be a negative. When you get money out, it would be a positive, et cetera. Uh, and that way you can think of when it's negative here. It's like, what would I pay uh, for this amount of money in five years? Today I would pay that to get $1,104 five years from now. That's the way I think of it. But anyway, on to annuity. So annuity, instead of getting a lump sum payment, we're going to get a set amount of money each year. So let's say we have a contract and we actually have an option here. Uh, so we'll do a lump sum as well, kind of, um, and compare them. And our option is to get a million dollars each year for the next 10 years. Um, we decided there's a discount rate of eight and a half on this, so how risky that money is um, if we delay it. And uh, our other option is just take $6.9 million at the end of year one, since these are both in the same time period. Okay, So here we have to discount each um, piece of uh, money that we get, so each million dollars has to get valued in its time, so they all get valued in a different year. Um, so I'm going to take that million, I'm going to divide it uh, by one plus our uh, discount rate, which in this case is right here, and always to the power of whatever year it's in. So this is where, when I run these year strings out of here, uh, they're useful for several things, but mostly they're used here where I can discount when I drag this over. It's going to change the discount factor for each one. Now you do have to lock this 8.5%. Um, so I'm going to hit F4 and then put the, the dollar sign around B6 because it's not moving and you need to discount it by 8.5% each time. Uh, but this can move because there's a different million each time, this B2, and this can move because we want to discount it by a higher factor each time. The further away the money gets, the more risky it is, and the lower our actual value. It also means we're delaying getting that money so we can't put it in use, whereas if we get this money up front, we can put it to use so it has other value. Anyway, uh, and then our MPV is just the sum of all the discounted cash flows like we talked about in class. 
All right, so if I just sum all these up, I get a value of $6.56 million. Versus if I elect to get uh, one plus <clears throat> 8.5, and it's so the power of one, so I don't need to mess with anything. Uh, whereas if I take 6.9 million at the end of year one, uh, that should be worth about 6.359 million. So it looks like our, our million dollar annuity is actually slightly more valuable. The sum of all the discounted cash flows here is just that. So it's the same as the DC up there, uh, or discounted cash flows, right? Um, so if we have two options, we can kind of look at them this way, and depending on our on our discount rate, a higher discount rate is going to push this value down. Um, so if we had if we thought this uh, stream cash flow was really risky, the 6.9 would be more attractive. But in this case, we feel like it's pretty safe to take the million dollars each year because it's worth more in discounted value than uh, the 6.9 million. Um, all right, and then on to both. So we could get a stream of cash flows. Uh, and then at the end, have a lump sum. So, for instance, if you bought a building uh, and you're renting out space in it and you think you're going to get $50,000 per year cash. Um, and again, I'm ignoring growth and stuff here because it makes, oh, we need to do the, the PV here. No, I'm sorry. So equals PV on the last one. The rate, right, comma, uh, number of years is 10. Uh, our payment is a million dollars a year. Uh, the future value here is zero. There's no lump anywhere. It's just the payments. Uh, and then you close it off, 6.561. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's how you do that. Uh, and then if we're doing both, so if you buy like a, an apartment building or something and you're renting them out and you think you're going to make $50,000 per year, roughly, and then at the end of 10 years, you're going to sell it for uh, the building for $4 million. Um, so that's your, your assumption of what you think. Um, this is going to be valued at. Uh, and so you can just discount all these cash flows the same way we have been doing. Uh, divided by 1 plus R, lock the R, power of 1. Um, go like that, we drag it over. You get that string of cash flows, and PV is just the sum of those. And it says, here's your value. So those cash flows are worth $2.384 million right now. So if you're looking at buying the building, this roughly would, you know, I have to pay, if I had to pay $2.384 million for this building, I'd roughly get that money back over time. Um, so it'd be a safe investment, meaning I'd get a 7% return on that um, over that time period, which might be uh, what I need to actually put the money down. Uh, and, you know, we can do the same thing equals PV. Uh, in this case, rate is the same. Still number of years here. Payment is $50,000 per year. And we have a future value of uh, not $4,050,000 because that payment's going to give 10 payments when you do put in something in payment here and give it a, a time of 10. Um, so your future value is actually just $4 million that again of zero it looks like it and then you close it off uh, and it should be 2.384 million 2.384 million five seven six okay um so that is how you do present value